Hola. Yes, hola. Hola, yes, España. So Javier is a very brilliant plastic surgeon from uh, Barcelona and uh, a great support of IMCAS from the very beginning. Thank you to present your case. Javier. So thank you, Bernardo. Um, I, saw, I say hello to all the Spanish people around the, the audience and also French, uh, German, Russians, and even... So the thing is, uh, uh, it's nice, you know, to, to hear Fabio, you know, because I'm going to do opposite to Fabio, and then that's going to do, you know, the, uh, it's going to be, you know, uh, nice, you know, to, um, to share, you know, both ways to reach Rome. But the important thing is, uh, as Fabio mentioned before, is uh, to talk about the anatomy. So, um, I don't know if you see, him, uh, yes, I need to front, just front of the patient, both sides, not, not just one side. Hello. I say, muy bien. So, the thing, let me put the Okay. So, uh, I'm, going to make, I, I, I'm going to make my drawings. I mean, as you saw, uh, uh, this, is, this is published on the Aesthetic Journal. This is called the Viaduct. And uh, let me show you, you know, uh, what these viaducts, you know, mean. So, the th most important thing is, uh, is this. We have, no, you know, this is the nasal labial fold. So we're going to treat the patient. I have, a, I have four types of treatments. I have type one is to treat the deep mid fat pad and the tear trough. Type two is to treat, you know, the lateral aspect of the, uh, of the lead cheek junction. Type three is when the patient needs volumes or needs support. There are two different concepts. And four, when you have to blend all the four areas. So uh, let me, let me g give me the gloves. The thing is, as we wrote on the paper, and Fabio mentioned before, uh, we, have, uh, we want to treat you know, the, uh, you know, the, the face. And we know that the face has different fat pads. What Ro what uh, Pesa and Rorik, you know, were described in 2008, we have added some more comments in, in uh, 2015 with uh, my colleague, Dr. Jelks. That's the thing we have published for dynamic fats. So, uh, the anesthesia? The anesthesia. I don't know. So, in all my patients, I use some kind of uh, anesthesia. All right. Oh, I use on the subcutaneous. This is very. It's just on subcutaneous aspect. Okay. Then I go to the zygomatic facial nerve. I inject a little bit. Just to keep, you know, I don't like, you know, in Spain, our patients, you know, doesn't like to feel any kind of pain. So uh, what I do is um, I just uh, feel, you know, the, um, you know, the, uh, the entrance of my cannula with some local anesthesia and epinephrine. Why I use epinephrine? Because uh, epinephrine makes me, you know, a small block of, uh, you know, of vasoconstrictions around the place where I'm going to use my, my needle. And it's also, it helps to prevent, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, embolism. So uh, I always uh, do that in all, my, in, all, in all my cases. Okay, so we have three major, we have six fat pads important to analyze. We have uh, three fat pads that give support that are the deep mid fat pad, the lateral soof, and the middle soof. These are three important, you know, fat pads that that stays, they don't move. And then we have uh, three you know, superficial fat pads that we have the, the nasal labial fat pad, we have the medial, the medial cheek fat pad, and the lateral soft, and, and, the, and the infraorbital fat pad. So what, you know, what Fabio mentioned about you know, dynamic is what we have uh, written in the paper, we call this the gliding effect. Superficial you know, fat pads glides over the deep fat pads. 
So that's why, you know, uh, what Fabio mentioned about, you know, these actresses in, in Rome that they use, uh, they have been injected, you know, superficially, is not wrong to, to, you know, to inject superficially. What is wrong is to inject superficially large particle size fillers or, or big cohesive, uh, you know, fillers. Because then you have, you know, all this is moving up and down, and then it's when it's visible. So when you want to give support to the face, you have to find, you know, the fat pads that give support to the face, and they are the deep mid fat pad, the lateral soof, the medial soof. These are the fats, you know, that give support. I'm talking about the, 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 you know, the middle third. I'm not talking about the temporal area. I'm not talking about the mandible. There are others. So the thing is... Um, Javier, you need to start injections because we're a little bit behind the time. It's Marina. Oh, ah, Marina, hola. Hi. Hola. Okay. Just, uh, they hate that I have to go... Dame la aguja. Okay. So I just inject uh, only the skin and give me the, um, the... That's it. And now... So I'm going to inject universal up, out. I'm going down to the um, to the deep mid fat pad. It's down to the bone. We know that here this is the premaxillary space, or it's called also the, the space of Risto. So this is going to restore the nasolabial fat pads support. Okay. Some massage. The patient doesn't need too much, all right? But, they get, but the patient needs different types of filler. All right, so now I'm going to ask the patient, now we give me uh, um, fine lines. Up gaze your eyelids, up gaze. Oh, 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 no, no, but touchez pas. No, regardez en haut. So when, you, when you're going to, to treat, you know, the tear trough, it's very important to ask your patient to move up the lids. Look, look down. You see the, the tear, you know, the junction, the junction uh, from the lid and the cheek is not visible right now. But when the, mo the patient moves up on up gaze motion, then it's, regardez en haut, then it's, it's visible. Do you see that? Perfect. So where I, how I treat that? I use um, fine lines. And then, because I have used universal that it's, it's, uh, has big cohesivity. Maintenant, uh, now I'm going to use, no, Lipa. I'll fill her. Alors, I place my finger over the rim, and then I want to do, I'm going to cross, I have to cross, all right? I have to cross the ligaments, and then inject, and, and down. I do what I, I call the stalagmite concept. I have to, I have to broken, you know, the, uh, the ligaments. I feel like a pop-up, a little bit, and down. So, Javier, this is your usual, the normal approach Absolutely. to fill up the tear tube. What I do is, uh, is this. Look, Marina. Yeah. What I do is this, mm -hmm. and this, this, and this, and this, and this. That's what I do. Because I believe that if you inject in this manner... We, we can't see. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm going to do it with the left hand. Mm -hmm. If you do like this, like standard procedure like this. My, my, my uh, feeling is you are, you are filling a hole. And this is a motion, is a dynamic, is a junction between the lid and the cheek. If you, f if you feel like, as a, like I did, I, I filled you know, the hole of the tear through, and at the same time, I'm filling you know, the gap between the lid and the cheek. And if you look carefully right now, even if it's look up and down, you see with just few drops, you, have a, you give a very natural, you know, illusion. I, I want to ask you another question. I, I'm sure that uh, a lot of people in the audience want to ask it. You know, sometimes we treat the eyelid-cheek junction for less ideal patients, the ones that maybe need a little bit of surgery due mm -hmm. to the fat herniation. 
and we are trying to make it less visible by filling up the junction. Hmm. In, is the, 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 in the same, in this case, you will do the, you will use the same approach. Always, I do. Okay. Look, 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 look. I'm, I'm on the middle last. You see that? Yeah. You see the needle here, the the cannula. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I place my finger, and then I give a, a little drop and down. Here. Believe me, I mean, I think um, even Coleman now is doing these fat injections and PISA too, you know, in this manner, because they believe that gives dynamics to the face. The other way is just filling holes. I hate filling holes because uh, we, the, I, I prefer a face with some holes, but dynamics that, you know, a, fail, a, a face f completely, you know, full of uh, liquids or, or fillers that, that haven't, they don't have any kind of expression. So, regardez en haut. Ok, so I'm going to treat here. It's the same. Down. Javier, while you are injecting, uh, injecting, I would like to ask you a question about the product choice. You are using Filorca line here. Yes. But what are the characteristics of the product that you would like to choose for this area? The characteristics are that, uh, you know, the caption of water. Less capture, I mean, uh, this product is fantastic for this region because it doesn't capture too much water. And then for, you know, the, uh, as you know, other products capture too much. And that's why sometimes we have uh, this effect of, uh, you know, the, the typical sausage effect. So that's why even if you choose a product who captures a lot of water, if instead that to do this, you do this, you're going to have a much better, you know, effect. All right? I always, you know, was said that what you have, not, what we do on the workshop is not what you're going to see, because as everybody knows, you know, we're going to have a, um, what, water, you know, uh, absorption. So I, I like to stop like this, but then I want to add some, some volume, not too much, to the, to the cheek. And now I use Volume, this is volume. Okay, let's, let's go, Javier, because we have the next uh, presentation uh, which is ready now. Okay, me deja solo, muy bien. While you are injecting, injecting I'm, I'll try to summarize actually what we've seen during your injection, Javier. So uh, you claim, and I totally agree with you, that injecting the cheek area, mid-cheek area, superficially it's not forbidden, no. but you have to choose the right product, the one that has Artfiller. more elastic features Artfiller. and will deform Artfiller. together with the tissue movement, not the one which resists the movement. This type of product we will use for deep supraperiosteal injections That's has it. been shown before. Look, Marina, if, yeah. uh, if I know I have just uh, one minute, but if I want to use the superficial fat pad, it's so easy. I take, you know, the superficial fat pad, you see here, you see my movement, and then I give drops with f fine lines. I'm, I'm feeling, you know, now I'm over the, and the most important thing, as Fabio mentioned before, about the groove here, I don't, I don't either, you know, feel the groove like this. I always feel, you know, perpendicular to give, you know, this, uh, do you know this lifting effect? Okay, thank you. Do you have a, a final comment? Is it good? Do you use the same technique? Yeah, I, I, yes, I use something very similar to that deep, uh, thicker product, deep perostale, superperiosteally perpendicular uh, technique on the bone, cannula, superficial, thinner product, more elastic product to, to, to finalize the results. I think that the most important part to remember when we are discussing the mid face, actually this area is much more, it's a subject for much better improvement with non-surgical procedures than with surgical. This is where I'm as a dermatologist, not a surgeon, really have no, a benefit by using perfect. it. Yes, I'm nobody's sorry. perfect, yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Marina. Mm -hmm.